Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now this one comes requested a couple of times and this is one of the Mermorn Banshees. These guys are cool. If you happen to be collecting from Soul Wars and you want to expand your Nighthorn army, these are a really good choice. They're a natural sort of progression. As well, I just want to quickly touch on this is also one of the ways in which I would get started on painting Lady Olander. Uh, a few of you guys have asked about that one and honestly I'm probably not going to get to that anytime soon, but the basics of it will be covered in this video here. So as you can see, getting a, <laughs> getting a look at it from quite the right angle is a little bit difficult to sort of show off what's going on there, but uh, these guys are a lot of fun. So let's take a look at what we're going to need and get started straight away. Now today's paints are all going to be linked down in the description below so that you don't have to worry too much, we won't go through everything all at once in the beginning. What I do want to do is a quick note on how we're going to use this Nylac Oxide. Now I've seen people thin this out with water, uh, which works perfectly well. I'm going to use Lamian Medium because I want a little more coverage than what that would normally allow. So where we're going to start from is her cape, her ghostly skin, everything we want to have that kind of weird spectral effect, we're going to bop on some Nylac Oxide. Now there's two ways I'm going to do this. First of all, if we get a closer look, you can see she's got spooky girly cape, and then she's got arms and what have you. Now, I like the idea that the arms are a little more solid, so I'm going to use Nylac Oxide straight from the pot. I'm not going to thin it out. But the cape and what have you, like these flowing robes, instead I want those to be a little more spectral. So we're going to thin that out instead, so it won't be quite so strong a color. Then what we'll do is we'll move on and we'll do a little bit of blue around the sort of dressy area. We're going to use Gilliman blue for that. And then some highlights, probably some dry brushing with Ultho and Grey. Now there is an optional step here, which is this skull section, uh, which a couple of them have. Now some people will do that in the same Nylac Oxide, which is perfectly, you know, you can do that. That is not a problem. It looks really cool. But I've seen people doing it in a sort of more traditional bony color. And I quite like that. I like the idea that there's one solid part of this ghost and she's going to bite you. <laughs> so I'm going to use a little bit of Seraphim Sepia and some Screaming Skull just to highlight that skull, that jaw. Okay, so let's get cracking straight away. We'll go on to the Nylac Oxide and we'll thin that out a little bit first. Now I've given my Nylac Oxide a good shake and I've got my medium shade brush here. I'm just going to load it up and I will go one two, three, let's go four. I've got quite a bit of ground to cover. Now, I'd always say, get your Lamy and Medium out before you get your, your next color, because you know you don't want to contaminate your, your paint any. So now I like Oxide, one, two, and let's just go with three. Let's not do a, a straight one-to-one. -one. That's still quite green, hmm. Well, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I don't want quite that much on my brush. Let's load it up about that much. And then let's start applying it all over the spooky ghosty stuff. So we'll start with her robes here and let's paint into recesses first. You see this goes on very much like a shade. So just grab your brush, go around now, and all of the spooky ghosty bits, let's put our mix on. Now while we've still got some sunshine, <laughs> I left it there for about half an hour to dry, and this is what we've got. Nylac Oxide, I just love how it settles, and you get that cool, chalky, spectral effect. Because we've thinned it out, there's not as much depth as we normally would have, but if you want, you can go back in, add a little bit more, or not, as the, as the mood strikes you. Now on her arms, um, I said I was going to do that with just straight Nylac Oxide, but I actually quite like how they've come out. And what I'm going to do instead is to skip a step and leave them pretty much like they are. What we'll do now though is move on to the Gilliman Blue. And what we'll do, here's the tricky part. Ordinarily, when you are painting, you're drawing your brush down a model, wherever you lift your brush away from, okay, you're going to that's where the pooling is going to happen. So if you draw a straight line, lift your brush, if there's any point where there's going to be a little blob, that's where it will form. 
Okay, now that's important for what we're going to do. What I am going to do with this Gilman Blue is instead of getting in there and painting it on like normal, we'll flip her upside down. <laughs> and the reason being is I can control better. I can touch my brush where I want the blue to start, drag it up towards her, her waist, let's say. And when I lift my brush away, this is going to be the area that is darker blue. All right, so let's crack that open. Now I am using here a medium glaze brush. Um, I've not had a play with this yet, so this will be quite interesting. What I'm going to do is get a little bit out onto my palette, because I don't want really very much. We're not going to use it like a shade, I just want to change some color. So start in the recesses and draw up toward her waist. It's not going to matter too much if I get it on the, uh, what do you call it, the corset thing that she's wearing, because we are going to paint over that anyway. And that's going on quite nicely, actually. So what I'm going to do is concentrate more towards, you know, those deeper recesses where the folds are in her cloak, cape, spectral body, however you want to run it. Just concentrate on bringing that color up towards the top. So what I'm going to do is once I've finished this first coat and this is dried, I'm going to go over again, but I'm going to start further up the body. All right, so let's do this first one. Now, once that's had some time to dry, I'm going to go over a second layer. Like I said, starting slightly higher up the body. Now, I'm going to switch to my uh, medium layer brush for this because I like the glaze brush, but it wasn't quite what I needed in that point. So let's start instead from about here this time. And just doing the same thing, adding in a bit of blue. Now, with that having had plenty of time to dry, we'll get on to some dry brushing. I've got my ortho in grey and a medium. Oh, this is a small dry brush, sorry. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So what I mean by that is we're just going to very lightly start dry brushing ortho in grey up the body. And you want to try and go across because you'll see, you know, particularly with the Mermor and Banshees, they have a lot of detail that is these deep recesses running the length of the body. So we want to paint across those. And just gently, gently building up color. As it concentrating more at the bottom, and then as you get to the top, leaving very little behind. Now you can add as much of this as you like, but like with all dry brushing, I suggest start with less and add more as you go. So same too with the back. You want to start at the bottom, build it up a little and then do very little up around the top. Um, her face, what we'll try and do is make that almost white, except for those recesses. <laughs> I love this model. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, this might take a few passes, uh, but the important thing is to build it up slowly rather than just getting one kludgy layer on straight away. So you see it's taking me a bit here along the, the dress itself. But that's what we want. We want to take our time, build up the color, and get a nice smooth transition. So let's come back once I've done a couple of coats of this and we'll see what we've got. Now I mentioned that it would take a few passes and it did, concentrating more towards the bottom. And you see, it's a little bit chalky. Uh, we are gonna correct some of that with a varnish later. But for the most part, it's just there to get a little bit more of that uh, translucency, that transition of color. Along the front, though, um, particularly, I mean, it's a little warm in here, so you might get some patchiness on the front, on the skirt that you want to avoid. What you can do, just water down a little bit of your ortho and gray, grab your small layer brush, and just paint straighter lines. Oh, straight if you, if you bleed and can, geez. I cannot paint today, <laughs> uh, but you can tidy up, you know, leave that slightly misty effect along the edges, but tidy up the uh, sort of visible folds. That actually looks quite cool. I like how that's, that's turning out. I've turned an extra light on. I think that'll help a little. But as well, I think you can see here that down the bottom, I actually put on a little bit more blue and gray. 
I liked how that was turning out, so just fading out a little bit more of the green around the bottom I think really helps that translucency. That's pretty cool. I like how that looks. All I'm going to do now, I'm going to stick to my small brush, and I've got my Sarah from Sepia, and be dainty, just add a little to this jawbone. Then just an eensy bit of screaming skull to bring that back up. Now that's the spooky stuff out of the way, we can get on to doing the leather. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this, this is just one. Uh, I would suggest that where it says starting from Rhinox Hide on the box, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so I've got Mournfang Brown here, and we're going to bring this down with a couple of shades. So straight over the top there, and this will probably need two coats to get a nice even brown. Now while that's drying, you can get onto your other colors. There's not much left to do. I've got my Balthazar Gold, and we'll get in and we'll do her blade, well the handle, heft, I'm sure somebody will correct me, <laughs> and uh, do the hourglass in at the same time too. If you can, try not to get it into the actual hourglass mechanism itself, but don't worry too much if you do, you can fix it up with a bit of ortho and grey. And then just a little lead belcher for the blade. Now I have conducted hours of research in between these two uh, clips, and I can confirm that there are in fact only two parts to any dagger, and that is the grabby and the stabby. So we're painting the stabby now, and we've done our grabby in Balthazar Gold. Very serious business. Now it is time for the best part. We have Agrax Earthshade. <laughs> I'm going to stick to a medium layer brush for this. Uh, you can get a bigger brush if you fancy, or smaller if you want more control. But just go over everything we just painted in with some Agrax Earthshade. Get a bit of depth in there, and nice and quick. Alright, so let's just pop this on and then see how it looks in about 10 minutes. Now I'm giving that roughly half an hour to dry, in fact, because what I'm going to do next is a bit of non oil. I really want this to be very dark, so let's go ahead and bop this over in the same way again. I'm not going to put this over the other details that we've already shaded. Just this leather that I really want that deep, evil shading to it. And with that second wash dried, you can see how dark that Morfang Brown goes. It's really cool. It's this nice, creaky, old leather appearance. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can highlight this. You could go back over with some Morfang Brown just to do some of the uh, flat areas, or you might want to go up to something like Scrag Brown. That's up to you. Personally, I'm going to stick to quite a washed out sort of appearance. I want this to look old and dry. So I'm going to use Sylvaneth Bark, and I'm actually going to dry brush some of these details. If you wanted to do it with a layer paint, if you wanted to you know, get in with a smaller brush, spend some time on it, Bane Blade Brown would probably be what I'd go for. Be sparing with it though, because we really want this dark, deep appearance to it. For our highlights, we only really want just the very edges to catch, so let's bust out one of these little dry brushes. As always, I've got one of my trusty little ones. Um, again, you can pick these up from the stationery aisle. Uh, this one came from a craft store, but it cost me under two euros. So you'll, I mean, two dollars for a brush like this, and this is going to be perfect. Let me show you what I mean. So we're going to get some paint and prepare our dry brush in the same way that we always would. But the bonus with these little brushes is that we can be very precise about where we are flicking on that paint. And you'll notice quite quickly how when it catches, we get that really cool, you know, creaky looking leather. I'm going to be quite sparing with it. I don't want to catch, um, you know, I don't want to catch too much of this. Just the very, very edges. And be careful when you're going anywhere that you've already painted. So watch out for her dress <laughs> and around her face and what have you. But take your time. You can do this with a small dry brush, um, you know, one of the Citadel ones, but just be mindful they are not quite as fine as these little ones are. Okay, so again, consider picking up some other tools. You'll find them very useful. But there we go. There is our uh, corset 
dry brushed. And people tell you you can't dry brush something, you can say, uh -uh, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, but like I said, if you do want to be more precise, Bane Blade Brown would be the option I'd use there. Now just concentrating on a couple of smaller highlights, we'll do the brass. I've got here some Sycorax bronze and just a small layer brush. Won't take much of this. All you want to do is just catch the edges of the grabby and then with a nice bright silver, do the stabby. <laughs> so help me if those stick. Now I'm using here Runefang steel, uh, but you can use any old thing you fancy. And you'll notice to get that sharp edge, I'm actually using the edge of my brush and just dragging it down the center of the blade rather than trying to paint a straight line with the tip because that is bound to go a little bit wiggly. There we go, easy as that. Then with a quick spray varnish, this is what we've got. And, you know, she's not looking too bad at all. Like I said, you can go smoother and that will take a little bit more time. But the general premise of the old Nilac Oxide, feel free to have a play around with that. I really think that's a dead useful way, no pun intended, <laughs> of painting your ghosts. Now the trick with getting a photo of these guys is trying to get in there without seeing all the way into the back of the miniature. And I want to briefly touch on people saying, well, I can't paint that bit all the way up in the back there. And Honestly, if it's that far removed from what you're going to see on the table, I wouldn't bother painting it. But these miniatures do come in two or three parts, and since they're push fit, they're pretty easy to paint them in separate pieces and then push them together. Now, speaking of that, this one actually pops off her base like that. So what I'm going to do now is very quickly paint the base. I'm not going to muck around too much on camera and show you that because there are a million ways you can do this. I've talked a little bit about basing before, and this is really just to finish her off. So let's come back quickly once I've done some paint on this. Now just to quickly touch on the base, you can use any old colors you fancy. I've gone for just simple brown, gray, bone color, so some Zandri dust, a little bit to do the flowers, and a little bit of green for some of the leaves that are sticking around there. Then on goes the Magrex Earthshade. And then once that's had plenty of time to dry, just a little itty bit of Tyrant Skull around some of these details, just to give it a little bit of depth. You want to be quite sparing with it, honestly, but just enough that you'll catch the edges of anywhere and bring that detail out a little bit more. And there at last we have her in context on her base, and I'm really pleased with how she turned out, actually. There are a few ways you could do this a little bit more tidily, but the trick is honestly in getting that first base coat on and then the dry brush to sort of guide where you want any of those highlights to go. You can get into it with the old uh, Ultha and Grey or even white if you want to, to really bring that up, but that's easy to do. The trick with this one here is that it's just so simple. And once they're on the table, oh, hoo -hoo, look out. So hopefully, guys, something there was useful to you. Like always, you can drop a comment in the old box below. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there too, with the reminder I'm a little bit more active on Twitter. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.